Hey YouTube, coming at you today with a little bit of an update on my my uh, RO unit. Now I went to Home Depot. This is not my uh, preferred setup for this, but the other day I ran out of the RO water that I had bought and uh, I decided why should I go drive and get more RO water when I've got my own RO unit. So I decided to set it up temporarily. And what I did was I went to Home Depot and I bought a quick connect fitting to fit into this connector. Now the connector is made for a bib faucet or, or large threads. And then I also bought a quick connect device for this. Now I could have used the the uh, plastic piece that was given given in the kit that would screw up into the sink and then screw up this would screw onto it. But unfortunately the piece that was given had plastic threads on it and every time I tried to use it it popped back out again. Plastic threads just don't do near the near the work that a metal thread will and so metal threads are better in this instance so I got a quick connect that's uh, $5.99 and this part was $9.99 so for 16 bucks I can hook this up and use it but I've run into a couple of issues with it one is that this piece has flat sides on it. It was obviously made to connect to something else, to another brass fitting probably. So it ends up giving me small leaks. Now I've tightened this down as much as I dared. I don't want to crack it so that I have to go buy a new one and put it on there. So I will show you here in a second how badly it leaks and what I've, what I've done about it. Okay, this is the the red line is your waste line, and I simply stick it down in the sink drain so that it won't come out. The blue line is the good water. Now I have two pre-filters, a RO membrane, and a DI that that will take all of the heavy metals and stuff out of the water before it is used for fish. Uh, it's a four-stage unit as opposed to a three-stage unit. Now let me grab a bucket there. Now I hooked this up yesterday. And I got 15 gallons of RO out of it. Now, it wasn't a full day's running, but it was enough for me to do a small water change. So today, I'm going to run a little more out. Okay, now when you're using an RO unit, and granted I'm a novice at this because I just started, but I've done some research on why, the hardness of your local water will have a great deal to do with how, how the RO unit functions. I need to clamp that. 
All right. So when I turn it on, I am going to adjust my valve to midway between hot and cold so that I'm going to be getting some of the hot and some of the cold because one, I'll get more pressure and you need 60 pounds PSI pressure for this unit to even function. And two, the warmer water will help the membrane. Now it, it has a limit. It will only go up to 160 degrees or something. Don't quote me on that. You'll have to look it up. But it will only go so high. So you want the water to be where it feels slightly cool to your touch because your skin temperature should be in the neighborhood of 95, 98 degrees and it should feel a little cold so like 80, 85, something like that. So here we go and you will see the leak that I'm getting here. Now it's not that bad of a leak but when the pressure builds up it will get a little worse before the unit starts producing water. Now I had it in operation yesterday so it's mostly full. It won't take that long for it to fill up. But I'm getting a small amount of spray that's coming out of the flat sides of this. And to solve that issue I came up with the old plumber's plan of wrapping a towel around it or a rag around it so that no spray is going all over the house. And as it increases the pressure that's coming out of it, you'll notice that it begins to drip pretty heavy. Not real heavy, not unacceptable, but this is not the permanent setting that I have had envisioned for this unit. Now, I'm getting RO out of this unit and it's going to be kind of difficult to see how much but you could probably hear there's a small dribble coming out of that unit now on the other hand if we turn over here to the sink well, I'm sure got a weird angle there you will see that I'm getting A great deal of flow out of the wastewater end. So your your wastewater is going to be anywhere between two or three to six or seven times the amount of water that's coming out of the RO end. So there's a lot of wastewater involved with this process. That's why it's expensive because someone has to pay for the sewage and the and the actual water flow bill. So if your local fish store is doing it, they're paying for five to seven times the amount of water that they would just use if they poured it out into a bucket for you. And that's an issue with the with, uh, RO. And it's one that I have not figured out exactly how to deal with yet. Okay, now I've also got another issue with this unit. I mean... When you, when you buy an RO unit, you're of course going to have problems. And this one indeed has another problem. And it's a slight problem. Let's see if I can adjust this down and get a closer look at this. I may not be able to get you to see see this because the focus is not going to be that good probably all right I'm going to stop it and restart it and try to focus close. now the focus is so bad on this I'm sorry I apologize but you can see water dripping from the top of the the unit that holds the holds the RO and it's not coming from above, it's actually spraying from a pin hair leak on that fixture that's the fitting that goes into the black bulkhead. And it's either the seal of the unit or it's potentially a small pinhole leak on the top of that 
white plastic piece that you can't see very clearly. Um, trying to get enough light in there, but it just won't focus. And I'm going to try to repair this. I have a method that might work and might also be interesting for you guys. It's going to involve filling the seal around the unit and going across the top. Those, those little elbows are made from pressed plastic and there's rough edges on the top of them. And that may be where my pinhole leak is coming from. But for the time being, it's fairly functional for me to get 10 or 15 gallons of RO to do water changes with. Okay, I'll be back in a little bit. Just a quick look at the actual output of the RO unit. And here's a little closer look at the output of the waste. So you can get an idea of the difference between them. And this is a coral life. And it's a pretty good one. It was pretty expensive, but I got it on sale. So I'm not too unhappy with... It had a couple of leaks around the seals, but I unscrewed and re-screwed them and didn't have any problems. Now, I know a lot of people have complained about all of these fittings leaking. Knock on wood, mine haven't. 